Procrimin operates 26 cruise ships in its fleet as of today, and two more are joining the fleet in 2024. So which are the newest, which are the oldest, and why does it matter? We've got a list up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RealCaribbeanBlog.com with 26 ships in the fleet, and as I mentioned, two more coming in 24. The fleet has a lot of interesting ships that you can choose from. The oldest Royal Caribbean cruise ship is actually 26 years old, whereas the newest one launched just last year. Despite being part of the same line, older ships offer a vastly different experience than those that are newest in the fleet. So if you're planning a Royal Caribbean cruise, I think it's really helpful to have an idea of which ships belong to Royal Caribbean's fleet. It can be difficult to keep track of every single ship and its age and amenities. So this week's video is all about giving you everything you need to know in one place. Here's a list of Royal Caribbean's cruise ships by age from newest to oldest, starting off with Utopia of the Seas coming in 2024. Utopia of the Seas will launch with its first sailing on July 22nd, 2024, and it will be Royal Caribbean's newest ship when she does launch in July. She's the sixth ship in the cruise line's Oasis class, which of course is known for its open air design and features like an aqua theater and Central Park. When Utopia launches, she's gonna be doing something a little bit different than any other new Royal Caribbean cruise ship has ever done before, and that is she's gonna offer just three and four night cruises from Port Canaveral, Florida, visiting Perfect Day at Coco Key and Nassau. This is part of a new strategy to attract new cruisers by putting their very best newest ship in a short cruise market. Speaking of new ships, the other new ship coming in 2024 will be Icon of the Seas. Icon of the Seas will be the world's largest cruise ship when she launches in January, of 2024, her inaugural sailing is on January 27th, 2024. And as the first ship in Royal Caribbean's new Icon class, Icon of the Seas will offer an impressive array of activities and amenities on board. People will be able to check out the new Aquadome neighborhood, Category 6 water park, and a family-friendly surfside neighborhood. Upon launch, Icon will offer seven night Caribbean itineraries from Miami, Florida. So you've got Icon doing seven night cruises, you'll be doing three and four nighters. It's a big push by Royal Caribbean to really attract that new cruise market. Next up is Wonder of the Seas. Wonder of the Seas launched in March of 2022. And as of this video, it's currently the world's largest cruise ship by gross tonnage. She's the fifth Oasis class cruise ship and has a little bit different design elements than her other sister ships, which include the View Bar, the Mason Jar Southern Restaurant, and actually an entire neighborhood just for sweets. Wonder of the Seas sells seven night Caribbean itineraries, visiting places in the Eastern and Western Caribbean along with, of course, stops at Perfect Day at Coco Key. Then there's Odyssey of the Seas, which is the fifth and final ship in the Quantum class. Quantum class ships are known for their technology-driven designs and activities. Highlights of a cruise on Odyssey include Ripcord by iFly, which is an indoor skydiving simulator, the Seaplex, which is an indoor sports arena with activities like bumper cars and roller skating, and of course, adults will enjoy the enclosed climate-controlled solarium, as well as the tropical-themed pool deck with a lime and coconut bar. Odyssey of the Sea sails to the Caribbean in the winter months and spends the summer in Europe, offering Greek Isle and Holy Land cruises from Rome. The next ship on our list is Spectrum of the Seas, which launched in 2019, and she's the fourth quantum class ship based in Asia year-round. In fact, Spectrum of the Seas was designed for the China cruise market. On board, you'll find extra casino space, a suites-only solarium, and a specialty restaurant with a Sichuan cuisine. Spectrum of the Seas currently sails from Singapore, but she's going to be offering cruises from Shanghai in April of 2024, and these cruises will visit places in Japan, China, and Vietnam. Symphony of the Seas is next on our list. Symphony launched in 2018, and she is the fourth Oasis-class cruise ship and is a great choice for anybody that wants an abundance of options when it comes to entertainment, dining, cabin choices, and activities. Symphony of the Seas is currently offering Western Mediterranean cruises in Europe, after the summer season comes to an end, she'll offer Caribbean cruises. Her sister ship, Harmony of the Seas, is next. Harmony launched in 2016, and it was the third Oasis-class cruise ship, offering Caribbean cruises year-round. She currently sails from Florida, but will reposition to Galveston, Texas in November of 2023. Unlike sister ship, Allure of the Seas, which currently sails from Galveston, Harmony will include updated Oasis-class features, like the Ultimate Abyss Dry Slide and Perfect Storm Water Slides. This makes her an even greater option for great Western Caribbean cruises. In 2016 as well, Ovation of the Seas launched, and Ovation of the Seas was the third in the Quantum class. Just like other Quantum class ships, Ovation was built to sail in all weather conditions, from Alaska to the South Pacific. 
Throughout the ship, you'll find several indoor spaces with floor to ceiling windows, such as the 270 Lounge, which allows you to enjoy views of your destination, rain or shine. In the summer season, Ovation of the Seas offers seven night Alaska cruises from Seattle. And as the Alaska season comes to an end, well, Ovation moves over to Sydney, Australia to offer South Pacific and New Zealand cruises. Another Quantum class ship is next on our list, and that is Anthem of the Seas. Having launched in 2015, Anthem was the second Quantum class ship and offers a wider variety of destinations than her sister ships in the class. During the summer, Anthem has typically offered European cruises from Southampton, England, visiting destinations in Norway, the Mediterranean, and the Canary Islands. In the winter, Anthem of the Seas has offered Caribbean cruises from Cape Liberty, New Jersey. In October 2024, though, Royal Caribbean is going to change it up, and Anthem of the Seas will reposition to Singapore and offer cruises in Asia for the first time. In 2014, we had the launch of Quantum of the Seas. Quantum of the Seas was the first in the Quantum class, and it was the newest class of ships to ever be a new class until Icon launches in 2024. Quantum of the Seas sails a wide range of itineraries. She offers Alaska cruises from Seattle during the summer and Australia, New Zealand, and South Pacific itineraries from Brisbane during the Australia cruise season. Allure of the Seas is next on my list, and she launched in December of 2010. And Allure of the Seas is the second Oasis-class cruise ship, and she's the only ship in the class not to be upgraded with certain amenities like water slides and different dining venues. She was supposed to receive an upgrade in 2020, but her amplification has been indefinitely postponed as a result of the pandemic. Nonetheless, Allure of the Seas still offers some fantastic features that cruisers are going to love that are associated with the Oasis class, which include an aqua theater, ice skating rink, Central Park, and Boardwalk neighborhood. Allure of the Seas sails Western Caribbean cruises from Galveston, Texas, but she's going to move to Florida in mid-2024 to offer three- and four-night Caribbean cruises. We're up to Oasis of the Seas, one of the original game changers that Royal Caribbean has ever launched and probably one of the best known ships in the world. Oasis of the Seas launched in December of 2009, and there was no other ship like Oasis when she launched in 2009. I can't understate that enough. I know we kind of gotten used to the Oasis class now, but at the time, it was, of course, the first the Oasis class, and it was unlike any other vessel to date that had ever sailed. 14 years later, the Oasis class is still the most popular class of cruise ships in Royal Caribbean's fleet. Guests have come to love the large, activity-filled ships in the Oasis class, as there's no shortage of things to do and see on board. Now, Oasis stands out because in 2019, she got a major amplification, and they had new dining venues added, water slides, a revamped pool deck, and new cabins. Next on our list is Independence of the Seas, which launched in 2008, and she was the last of the Freedom-class ships. Independence got an amplification in 2018 that added water slides, an escape room, and a kid's aqua park to the ship. Also, Independence of the Seas has Grease, the Broadway musical, available on board. The ship makes an excellent option for a short cruise and offers three, four, and five-night cruises visiting the Caribbean. Liberty of the Seas is next. Liberty is the second Freedom-class cruise ship launched in 2007, and just like the other Freedom-class ships, offers short cruises from Florida. Liberty currently sails from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, offering three- and four-night cruises that visit both Perfect Day at Cuckoo Key and Nassau, Bahamas. And then you have the other Freedom Flash ship, Freedom of the Seas, which launched in 2006. Freedom of the Seas is one of Royal Caribbean's best ships for a short weekend getaway. After her 2020 amplification, Freedom of the Seas received some major upgrades, including a tropical-themed pool deck, water slides, and updated dining venues and bars. Freedom sails three- and four-night itineraries from Miami, visiting Perfect Day, Echo Key, and the Bahamas. And in 2024, Freedom's going to begin offering six, seven, and eight-night Caribbean cruises. Jewel of the Seas is next, having launched in 2004, and Jewel was, of course, the last in the Radiance class, and the last Royal Caribbean cruise ship to be built with a multi-story atrium, as opposed to either Royal Promenade or Royal Esplanade. She offers longer itineraries than most newer Royal Caribbean cruise ships, including a 12-night Arctic Circle cruise and 11-night Southern Caribbean cruises. She spends her summer season in Europe and repositions the Caribbean during the winter months. One of my favorite ships of all time, Mariner of the Seas, is next. Mariner of the Seas launched in 2003, and she was the fifth Voyager-class cruise ship. And she's really popular among cruise fans because she offers some of the best value in Royal Caribbean's fleet today. Amplified in 2018, Mariner of the Seas features many of the same activities and dining venues as the fleet's newer cruise ships, yet cruise fares are often much lower than ships like Symphony and Wonder of the Seas. Mariner of the Seas sails the Caribbean year-round, offering cruises to the eastern and Western Caribbean. 
Next on the list is Serenade of the Seas, another Radiance class ship having launched in 2003. And Serenade is about to become Royal Caribbean's most well-traveled ship because in December of 2023, Serenade of the Seas will set sail on the cruise line's first ever ultimate world cruise, a 274 night journey to all seven continents. No, I'm not going on there, but I would love to. As a Radiance class ship, Serenade is well designed for such a colossal journey and offers indoor spaces like a climate controlled adults only solarium and indoor movie theater. Another great ship on our list. They're all great, but I mean, these are just ones that stand out to me. Of course, our Navigator of the Seas launched in 2002. If you're on the West Coast, well, the Navigator is going to be a great ship for you because she sails from LA in California. Navigator of the Seas features amenities like a record breaking water slide, tropical themed pool deck, a tiki bar, and hooked seafood restaurant, all of which were added in her 2019 amplification. On Navigator, you can sail down the Mexican Riviera and visit places like Cabo San Lucas and Puerto Vallarta. Brilliance of the Seas launched in 2002, and she may be a small cruise ship by Royal Caribbean standards, but Brilliance makes up for her size with exciting itineraries in the Pacific. During the summer, Brilliance of the Seas sails from Vancouver, Canada, offering seven night cruises to Alaska. In the 2023-2024 Australia season, she'll offer unique itineraries in the region, including a 34-night circumnavigation of Australia. Adventure of the Seas launched in 2001, and she was the third Voyager-class cruise ship sailing from Florida and offers six and eight night cruises to the Eastern, Western, and Southern Caribbean. Unlike sister ships Mariner and Navigator of the Seas, Adventure did not get an amplification. While she still has Voyager class features like an ice skating rink and outdoor solarium, she doesn't have the cruise line's most updated dining venues and lounges and entertainment. Radiance of the Seas was launched in 2001 and Radiance of the Seas is the first in the Radiance class, which was designed to offer comfort while sailing through a variety of climates and landscapes. Splitting her time between Alaska and the Caribbean, Radiance of the Seas does just that and offers comfortable indoor spaces on either type of itinerary. She differs from other ships sailing to Alaska in the fact that she offers one-way Alaska cruise itineraries. These itineraries start in Vancouver and end in Seward, Alaska, and vice versa, allowing guests to combine a seven-night cruise with a land vacation in the state's interior. Explorer of the Seas had her inaugural sailing in October of 2000, and she's a Voyager-class ship, splitting her time between the Caribbean and Europe. During the summer, Explorer offers itineraries to the Greek Isles and Adriatic, and in the winter, she sails to the Eastern, Western, and Southern Caribbean. Water slides were actually added to Explorer of the Seas, kind of surprisingly, in February of 2023, making the vessel more equal to her sister ships, but just like a lure, she missed out on her amplification that was supposed to happen in 2020. Then we have Voyager of the Seas. Voyager, another game changer. We're talking about Oasis-class ships, and that was a big deal. Well, when Voyager launched in November of 1999, she was a head turner. She featured the cruise industry's first ever Royal Promenade, an indoor thoroughfare running down the center of the ship. The Promenade has since become a staple of all Royal Caribbean cruise ships, and it's where guests can find retail stores, bars, lounges, and other venues like guest services and next cruise. I mean, there's many more accolades that Voyager of the Seas introduced. The rock climbing wall came from there. The ice skating rink. We take them for granted now, but it's all because of Voyager of the Seas. Voyager currently sets sail from Galveston, Texas, but She'll make her way to Europe for the 2024 summer cruise season. Let's hit some of the smaller ships on the list here, starting with Vision of the Seas. Vision was launched in 1998, and she's the namesake for Royal Caribbean's Vision class. Vision class ships, when compared to other Royal Caribbean cruises, are relatively small. Fun fact about Vision, usually the first ship in the class is what the class is named after. Oasis of the Seas, got the Oasis class. Icon of the Seas, Icon class. But Vision was the last in the class. Kind of a weird thing. But back then, I guess it made sense. Despite having a capacity of over 2,000 guests, they lack features like sports court, water slides, and other amenities you might find on newer ships. Nonetheless, a Vision class ship like Vision to the Seas enables you to fit into a wider variety of ports. Vision is the only Royal Caribbean cruise ship sailing from Baltimore, Maryland, where she offers cruises to the Caribbean, southeast coast of the U.S., and Bermuda. Now we have Enchantment of the Seas, which was launched in 1997. And... Another fun fact for you, Enchantment of the Seas is the only Royal Caribbean cruise ship in the fleet currently to have been stretched. There were other ones before that, but she was the last cruise ship to be stretched. What does that mean? That means they took the ship out of the water. They literally cut it in half, split it apart, added a new section in the middle, which added new cabins, and then fused the ship back together. So Enchantment is slightly larger than other Vision class ships. Enchantment of the Seas is still among the fleet's smallest vessels, but is longer and heavier than her sisters. 
Enchantment currently sails out of Europe for the summer season, but will return to Florida in fall of 2023 to offer Western Caribbean cruises from Tampa. Then we have Rhapsody of the Seas, which was launched in 1997, and it's the second Vision Class cruise ship and offers some of Royal Caribbean's most intriguing itineraries. Right now, Rhapsody is based in Europe, where she's selling Greek Isle itineraries from Haifa, Israel, and Limassol, Cyprus. After the summer season, she'll begin offering seven-night cruises in the Southern Caribbean and Central America, with home ports in Colombia and Panama. And then we have the oldest Royal Caribbean cruise ship in the fleet, Grandeur of the Seas. Grandeur of the Seas is 26 years old, having launched in December of 1996. Small but mighty, Grandeur offers a traditional cruise experience and sails Caribbean sailings from Florida. In 2024, she'll offer a 15-night Greenland cruise, along with several shorter Canada cruises departing from Boston. So, should you sail on an old or a new Royal Caribbean cruise ship? Most people prefer cruising on newer ships because they offer the most variety when it comes to activities, cabin categories, dining options, and entertainment. Voyager, Freedom, Oasis, and Quantum Class ships are all considered newer ships, whereas Vision and Radiance, I think, are pretty much older at this point. Even though the Radiance class technically launched after the Voyager class, Voyager class ships just feel newer because they're bigger and they have more activities like water slides and design elements like a Royal Promenade. When you put Royal Caribbean's newest and oldest ships side by side, you'll find similarities and differences. The classic Royal Caribbean experience is still the same as you can enjoy meals in the main dining room, attend nightly entertainment shows, and grab your favorite signature drinks by the bar. Where the experience really does differ though is in the amount of programming and activities on board. While you might have just a few restaurants to choose from on a Vision class ship, for example, you could choose from eight or nine on an Oasis class ship. One advantage of old ships, of course, is the variety of itineraries that are available. You won't find the fleet's newest ships traveling to places like Greenland or Costa Rica. Many new ships are located in either Caribbean or Europe, and they're sailing the old same itineraries year after year. Before booking a Royal Caribbean cruise, take the time to research what each ship offers so you understand which one is gonna fit your travel style. Some people may prefer sailing on older, smaller ships, whereas others enjoy the variety of amenities on Royal Caribbean's newest and biggest ships out there. All right, so there now you have the list and know what to look for. Let me know in the comments below, which of these ships stand out to you? Why would you choose one over the other? And what's your favorite Royal Caribbean cruise ship? Let me know in the comments below. While you're down there, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.